today on EA Sports. It's week nine of the NFL on EA Sports. Now this will make it into the end zone. They had no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. And an early how do you do right there as they're going to bury him in the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Brings up second and 11. At the 20, they're going to look to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Safety valve here. That's complete. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. It's a gain of six, but not enough as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. So likely a three and out on their opening drive. That's not a good omen for a team that's lost three straight games. Too many threes that you're mentioning right there. That's a number they've got to get off of. And the big risk you're running right now is discouragement amongst the ranks. How do you keep them up? How do you keep them motivated? They've got to dial up something to give themselves some confidence. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea. Slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. And he was hit as he threw it there is it incomplete after the incomplete pass here now is second and ten and that one goes incomplete he's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it defensively here you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the nfl so when they're that high power you got to find a way to hold them under 20 because to me that's the magic number 20 points score gives you something. You give yourself the best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. And he's top five in the league in terms of receiving yardage because of plays like that. What have you seen from him on film that you like so much? Well, I'll strip away everything else and get to what we call the moment of truth. When the ball's arriving and there's a defender there, he just comes down with the ball. He competes and takes it away. Great hands, great ability to finish the catch. From the gun, Adams. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. And we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. And he's got it to make it 7-0 Bengals. So the drive there took six plays. And it ends with a Bengals score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And they'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Browns drive about to get started. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Kind of shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Yeah, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, you realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. The Pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Two sacks last week. Another one right here. He's been unblockable lately, and I think that goes all the way back to not just his offseason, but the film study he's been doing during the week because I think he's found matchups that he likes. And he's going to go down again. 
a great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Well, a solid punt, but also a nice return there of 14 yards. And the Bengals will take over in terrific field position. And to give this time to the tailback. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. All right, I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is, in the NFL, that option to throw the football all comes about organically. It's a natural deal based on reads. In college, if you're going to throw the football for triple... And this is going to be intercepted. Good position against Pictou. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. When he went on the move there and started rolling out, I thought there was a window, but that window closed quickly, intercepted. And sometimes, despite how big your arm talent is, you don't get enough on a throw when you're on the move as opposed to setting your feet and stepping into one. That may have been the case there, and the defense certainly benefited. These are his numbers from last week's contest. Six catches, 74 yards, and a touchdown. And he has 10 touchdowns on the season. When anyone scored that many times, as a former defender, I know exactly what you're talking about before the game. Key on him. Don't let him get the end zone today, guys. Let's keep him out of there. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off. A pretty decent game. From the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent game, but all for none on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. A lot of people celebrating. The guys who just gave up that play. Side here, and that's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30 yard line. Three yards the game there, second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top and take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. A gain of five brings up third and six. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he finds Cook. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. At the 46 yard couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. First down, it's Watson. And no room to get over there. Give him a yard up to the 47. The tackle yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Quarterback sack. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, 
definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. That'll go as a 39-yard punt. Give him nine on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and ten. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Second and 10. Now Adams to throw. Looking to throw on second down. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there and a first down. Bengals first down. Operating from the gun. Adams. It's complete. He's got it. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. No gain on the play. Second and ten at the 30-yard line. Now Adams to throw on second down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Cincinnati. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Now this will make it into the end zone, and it will come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. He's playing pretty well. I don't think it's necessarily him changing up something he's doing, but that old line, they've got to protect him better. The Cleveland offense ready to go. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. And then open down the middle of the field. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. First down 10 at the 45-yard line. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off here the 32. And he'll take this all the way down inside the 40. This interception will go on the record of the quarterback. But as a receiver, you've got to understand where you are in the field. Middle portion, you know it's going to come in hot. Square your body to the quarterback and be ready to make the catch. And he's able to skip away from that first defender on his way to a pickup of five. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Back to throw. Adams sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Tackled at the 25-yard line. Certainly making his presence felt in both the pass and the run game. He's having an impact. Yeah, and his first carry of the game right there. He had hurt him with his arm. Now he's showing that he can shuffle the puppies as well. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Tackle made at the Two minutes to play, first half. It's 14 to nothing. Second and two. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores for games in front. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 
22. Now maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick me up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. The pressure gets to him again. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Fourth down, so Zach Taylor sends out the field goal unit. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coach is always talking about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points. Either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Their own the Browns drive about to get started. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Now this one complete on the slam round. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not first and 10. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Again, he'll drop the throw. That is a sexy defense stands up on third. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Example of a team that was really amped up. They've been playing so well, yet they didn't get over excited and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play. Instead, they created their own big play with a pick six. This one may be over. Yeah, it's just the first half, but that lead is swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25 yard line their own 25 yard line a look at the running back the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again and for him it's been pretty limited involvement down on the scoreboard maybe time to turn to this guy and you know me well winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game maybe you go away from a little bit now but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference they haven't established that running game yet the question is will they second and ten at the 25 yard line and second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Coming for his running back, and he's got him complete. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Out of the gun now on third down. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. On play action, they'll throw. Oh, he's able to out-muscle him here as he pulls it in. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. So we've come to halftime. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. Browns, nothing. The Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. And it's a pretty good return here as they get this up to the 29. At their own 29-yard line. So here are the Bengals set to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and ten. And he's going to get a 
solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. So the fullback, the beef, normally the lead blocker, shows that he can run it a long ways as well. And he does have an ability to run away from people, but you and I both know he'd rather run through people when he carries the ball. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Two yards that time, a stark contrast from the big chunk on the previous play. The last run got a couple, here's second and eight. From the gun, Adams escaping the pressure right. And it's knocked away and incomplete. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try and pass downfield that felt incomplete. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. From three yards out, and the Bengals just continue to pour it on. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. The Cleveland offense ready to go. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is, just what you said, you've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. They have three yards on first down, just one yard there. And that is incomplete. Incomplete from the contact. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been many. This defense has been all over them. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone around the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. They're so fundamentally sound, it's hard to execute against them. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a handoff looking right. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run-pass option. You get the sense that next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? taken down. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles are usually more of the run stuff and variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. 
And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brings up second and five. They'll run it here. This is their fullback getting the carry. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? And that was a good collision right there. And I know this as a former defender. If you're playing linebacker, you're going through a checklist on every play. Who you think's going to get the ball? Where you think the ball's going to go? Rarely do you expect the fullback position to get it. And on that play, he did. So you've got to steal yourself at that point because the contact is going to be strong. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Flushed out right. Oh, ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10, and he returns it here to his own 18-yard line. Well, I get what he was trying to do. He was moving to his right and trying to shift the coverage, but instead he shifted the coverage also to the right and threw right into it for an interception. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. At the 17-yard line. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Over the middle complete. It's Chavez. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good out of Steve Dunn. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on for the fifth time here today. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And take it right on the 30. A 41-yard punt, nine on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And he's going to be stopped here for no gain. And that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter play. Back now here on EA Sports. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And the Bengals on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and ten. You said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, they left 20 behind a long time ago in this game, didn't they? It looks like they're headed towards a big, big number. But 20 was the threshold because that kept them in the ball game and kept the pressure off of their own offense. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow. talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like that. When I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you want to hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Second and 11 at the Bengals' 16. Second and 11. And it's caught at the seven-yard line. And here he'll get it down to the seven. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. So they will get on the scoreboard here. Give them credit for that. Too little, too late, but no zero. The kick is good. You're going slow clap on me. <laughs> Not very nice, is it? No, but they haven't been very nice on offense. It's been a struggle. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. 25 yard line. Cincinnati set to take over once again. They're looking at a third straight win here if they can hold on. Now they 
to try the right side here. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. He was ready. I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations. There'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from walking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Number 82. No let up in this passing game. They've been a well-oiled machine throughout. And I actually saw a few guys on the sidelines at the end of the third quarter doing the old hold up four fingers college sign, meaning the fourth quarter is ours. And they certainly want to get it. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. I'll tell you what, partner, the way he's been slinging it in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. But one thing we've both learned about quarterbacks in this league, the offense down the field longer than you expect. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. He brings up second down. to throw again. Adams going to throw deep for the end zone. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. When you look at the scoreboard, you'd think they'd be pretty comfortable right now with this lead, but these guys are absolutely not going to let up. They want to increase their lead, and they want to do it with a big play. Unable to connect in that attempt. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. First and goal, Cincinnati. Adams operating from the gun. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Even though they've got this big advantage, Charles, they are not taking their foot off the gas pedal right now. Well, I think what we're seeing is the result of all their great preparation and great practice time during the week. And even though it seems like this is a great chance to pull people back and maybe, you know, not try and score a few more times, they don't want to do that. I think they're enjoying what they're seeing, the collective effort, and they want to play it all the way out. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. They're on the 24-yard. The Browns drive about to get started. And you see a lot of frustrated faces as they are inching closer to a fourth straight loss. The first play of the drive there is incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team... They've really been put through the ringer in this one. Throwing it in here on second down, this time complete. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. The Browns on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and four. That'll be complete to Cook. And he is going to have the Browns first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. I think everyone in the stadium saw that big hit coming. And I, as a former defensive back, have to admit I'm a little disappointed. He actually was able to hold on to the ball. He brought the lumber on that play. Give my man a whole lot of credit for taking the hit and possessing the football. And picking up the first down. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. They'll look to throw now on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Three yards the game there, second down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 23. It's a gain of 11 yards that time. It produces a new set of downs. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. 
A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. Fighting a safety valve here. That's complete. And the Browns are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. First and goal at the two-yard line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. And this is caught. Now they get one back. Picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. Jason Sanders. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead is down to 24. Taken in at the three. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. If they use the timeouts here, it's strictly for show. Seven for number 84. We got play in the catch. Brings up second and 10. At the now it looks like he'll throw here. down there on a pickup of 25. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it from that running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. And incomplete here. So that will leave him with 16 on the clock. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again. Adams. He's going to loft one deep over the middle. And that'll be incomplete with nine. Seconds now showing on the clock. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And they'll look to throw again. He's going to let it go again. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. He was covered by Denzel Ward. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. Operating from the gun, Adams. He's going to take another shot here, and it's incomplete. But still throwing to the very end, but now this game is over. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, Stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you.
So for Cincinnati, they're setting themselves up as a major contender as they move to 8-1 and one now on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Cleveland, they fall two games under 500 now at 3-5. and five. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the 